It's interesting, this idea of the Big Bang created the universe. That's what Einstein's theory says. That's textbook cosmology, if you like. But the current textbook picture is there was a, a phase in the universe's life before the Big Bang, if you define the Big Bang as the hot, dense phase from which the universe appeared to sort of burst forth 13.8 billion years ago. And that phase is called inflation. So what we think happened is that before that, the universe was accelerating exponentially fast. It means it was doubling and doubling and doubling in size. And the numbers are ridiculous. We think that if you started with a universe that was smaller than a single atom, then it would be bigger by a long way than the whole observable universe, 350 billion galaxies in it, in less than a million, 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 million millionths of a second. So very rapid exponentially fast expansion. And when that stopped, all the energy that was driving that expansion got dumped into space. It heated it up. It produced the particles of matter out of which we are made and all the things that we see out there in the sky. And that's what we see as the Big Bang. So that sounds fanciful, but that's standard cosmology at the moment. The big question then is, well, what started the inflation? What stops the inflation? How long did the inflation go on for? And the answer to that is, we're not sure. We don't know. Before everything we know, there was a tiny, super dense point. It suddenly started expanding, creating atoms, molecules, stars, and galaxies. But what was there before the Big Bang? In an instant, the universe snowballed, doubling in size over 80 times in a split second. This fast expansion, powered by mysterious energy, left the universe empty and cold. Only after this did the hot, dense state of the Big Bang happen, leading to everything we see today. Some of those theories suggest that the inflation doesn't stop all at once. It stops in patches, and every time it stops, you get a universe. And so some of these theories, they're called eternal inflation theories, suggest that there might not be just our universe, the bit that we can see, but there might be many universes, perhaps an infinite number of them, and they may be being produced all the time. So what to make of that? But that's where current modern cosmology is. If cosmic inflation truly describes what happened before the Big Bang, it might place the ultimate question of our origins beyond the grasp of science. However, this just shifts the question further back, as we remain clueless about what existed before the inflation. There are theories now that suggest, as I mentioned, that there may be more than one universe, and potentially an infinite number. It's a mind-boggling idea, isn't it? And I should say one extra thing. If that's true, then some of those theories say that what we call the constants of nature, so things like the strength of gravity, the speed of light, the masses of the particles, can vary from universe to universe. And then you ask the question, well, why is our universe so perfect for life? Why do stars make carbon and oxygen the elements that you need for life? Why is everything so beautifully balanced so that living things can exist? The answer in these cases is because, well, every universe exists. Every possible combination of the laws of nature exists in different universes. So the reason we, obviously the reason we, we have to see a universe that allows us to exist, obviously, we could ask the question, well, how likely is that? Well, the answer, if there are an infinite number of them, is it's inevitable because there's every possible kind of universe. And I stress that this is very speculative stuff. But the first thing I said is about inflation. The idea that there was this exponentially fast expansion before the Big Bang, if you want to use that language, that's not speculative. That's mainstream cosmology. But this idea that that may lead to multiple universes is more speculative. But it's still scientifically valid, and there are people who do research into that. And again, this is an active area of research. Before the Big Bang, according to the inflation theory, there was an incredibly cold and empty space. Imagine it as a vast void, devoid of matter and anything else except space itself. This empty space held energy, which caused the universe to stretch out, expanding to an immense size. Some scientists propose alternative ideas to explain what happened before the Big Bang, beyond the concept of inflation. There's a theory there may be extra dimensions in the universe. So imagine that we, we're just living on a sheet of paper, let's say. Then there are theories where here's our universe floating around and there can be another universe floating around. So there are more spatial dimensions and we're just on a sheet floating around in this bigger multiverse. 
And then you can ask the question, well, what happens when they collide together? And one of the theories about what caused the Big Bang is that actually what it was, was two of these sheets, or brains they're called, that they collide together and separate. And when they collide together, they heat themselves up and you get something that looks like a Big Bang on that sheet of space and time, if you like. So that's another different theory for what happened before the Big Bang. Multiverse theories, although might look speculative, actually have a mathematical foundation. Theories that describe the early stage of the universe have some experimental support. The wonderful thing is that we can, we're making measurements now. I should say the experimental basis for all this is something called the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, or the CMB. So we can look up into the sky and we can see the oldest light in the universe. It was released at 380,000 years after the Big Bang. It's when the universe cooled down sufficiently for atoms to form. And at that point, the universe became transparent and that light has been traveling through the universe ever since. And we have a satellite up at the moment called Planck. It's a European satellite that's been taking detailed pictures of this light. And in that light, it's like a baby picture of the universe, like a scan, a baby scan of the universe in, in a sense. And so you can look to the universe as it was in its very earliest days and see different structures and different properties of that light. And they give you the clue as to what happened right back at the beginning of time, the beginning of the universe. And that's where these theories are getting their experimental support. In the realm of modern physics, two foundational pillars stand tall. Einstein's general relativity and quantum theory. To unravel the mysteries of the Big Bang and what preceded it, we must harmonize these two theories. Only then can we address the ultimate cosmic questions. What is space? What is time? What constitutes the universe? And where did it originate? Consider this. The most distant objects in our universe lie a staggering 47 billion light years away. This vast expanse makes the observable universe a whopping 94 billion light years across. Now you might wonder how the observable universe can be larger than the time it takes light to travel over the age of the universe itself. The answer lies in the universe's expansion. Over time, the fabric of space itself has stretched, causing extremely distant objects to move even farther apart. Is there anything beyond the universe? Probably not. We suspect quite strongly that our universe could well be infinite in extent, even our bit of the universe. If we just take our universe, it's certainly, we're sure, it exists far beyond the bit we can see. So why would I say that? Well, if you think about it, the universe is, the, our bit at least, has been around 13.8 billion years. That means that light has only had 13.8 billion years to travel from the bit that we can see to our eye. So we can only see as far as light has had time to travel. But we think there's a lot beyond that because of measurements we've made of how the universe is curved and what the structure of the universe is. So it undoubtedly extends beyond the little bubble that we can see. How far it extends, it's another great question. We don't know, but it could be infinite in extent. How will the universe end? Well, the current best guess or best estimate, is that it will carry on expanding forever. And the reason I say that is because, actually, the universe is accelerating in its expansion, which is a great mystery, because before that discovery, we thought, well, gravity is always attractive, and so it should be, you know, we've got all these galaxies in the universe, and the universe has been expanding since the Big Bang, and so it should at least be slowing down. And there was even a question as, is there enough matter in it to slow it down so much that it stops and recollapses again? But this new discovery that the universe is accelerating in its expansion suggests that it will continue to accelerate unless some new physics appears that we don't understand, and so it will just continue to expand forever.